If you're planning a cruise, you may be wondering how much cash do I need to bring? Of course, this varies dramatically based on where you're going and what you're doing, but even still, this is what I use to work out how much money I'm gonna take on my cruises. I actually did a survey on Facebook of over 200 cruisers and asked them how much cash they would bring on a seven night cruise. It seems that the average is between zero and 250 pounds, and people that bought more actually bought more to spend in the casino rather than in the ports, which did surprise me. That gives us a vague place to start and what we're gonna do in this video is go through everything that you might need to spend when you're on board so that you can add up how much you think you'll need and you're not gonna to have too much cash or not enough cash when you do take a cruise. Most purchases that you make on a cruise will be done on your cruise card, which will be linked to a credit or debit card. You don't really need to use cash when you are on a cruise ship. In this video, we're talking about cash, like real cash, paper and coins. The first thing to think about is the money that you're gonna spend in the ports that you are visiting. I always start by thinking about taxis and public transportation. I normally budget around 15 pounds or $20 for a taxi if I think I'm gonna need a taxi. The more research you can do before you cruise, the better, but generally speaking, I think it's nice to have some cash in the taxi fund. Of course, a lot of taxis do take credit cards now and debit cards, but not all do, and you don't wanna to get to the end of a taxi journey, be asked for cash and not have any when you're in a foreign country. That sounds terrifying. A random tip now, if you are cruising to Marseille on a Mediterranean cruise, the cruise line will tell you you're really far from town and that you have to get a shuttle bus that costs 30 euros. That is a lie. If you walk just outside the cruise port, there is a free bus to town. And this is why it's really important to research your cruise ports before you go on a cruise, because if you're a family of four and you were gonna spend 120 pounds on a transfer and there's a free bus just outside the port, you're gonna to wanna to know that that is worth you Googling it. <laughs> The next thing to think about is entrance to attractions. If you're going somewhere and you really want to see it, it's normally best to bring cash. A lot of places do not take credit and debit cards. When I'm at home, I use my credit and debit card for everything. If I'm going in a shop and I'm buying one banana, I'm putting it on my card. I do not use cash. So for me, traveling is pretty much the only time when I actually use cash. If you can book online before you go, definitely look into doing that. You can normally skip the queue if you already pre-booked tickets and use your credit and debit card at home. This is a bit of an odd one for me because I do not buy cruise souvenirs for anybody on any trip that I ever go on, ever. If you are somebody who likes to buy souvenirs and gifts, I would budget maybe £10 or $15 per port so that you can do this. Taking a few small notes can be really useful if you are going to be buying from like a little market store or a shop that doesn't have a credit card. If you're going to be off the ship all day, you may want to budget for food and drink. I don't do this a lot of the time, but I do budget around £15 or $20. If you're going to be off the ship for a full day and you'd like to try some local cuisine, which I would definitely recommend doing, don't just always go to McDonald's like I do, but I tend to budget around £15 or maybe $20-ish for food and drink when I'm out in a port. Say if you go to Norway and you have 15 pounds, you can pretty much not afford to eat anything. I bought a pint of cider in Norway and it cost me 12 pounds. Of course, you don't have to spend a single penny on food and drink when you're out and about. It is always nice to support a little bit of the local economy by just buying a coffee or something, but you don't have to. You can come back onto the ship and eat all of the food that you've already paid for. That's also quite a good option and one that I go for a lot of the time. You're probably going to want to budget some cash for tips. It's very different the situation with tipping in most of Europe and America. In most of Europe, if you go to the restaurant and you do not tip, that's fine. You've paid for your food. That's no problem. I tend to tip between about 10 to 15% if I'm having a meal or going in a taxi. In America, you need to tip more like 20% on everything just as a standard or those waiters will not get paid. If you're American, bring $1, $5 bills. It's kind of annoying for us in the UK. We don't have one pound notes, so you'd have to hand out a one pound coin, which does seem a bit odd. If everyone else is doing it and tipping at the end of a tour, you don't want to be the one person who hasn't brought any cash with you. So just budget a little bit for tips. I personally think that this is the most important one on the list. You may disagree with me, but it is bringing small coins so that you can use toilets. In a lot of Europe, you do have to pay to use public toilets. I have a few coins that I just leave in my purse year round in case I'm stuck in a foreign country and I really need to use the toilet. Another great option is to find a McDonald's. There are McDonald's all over the world and their toilets are usually always free. 
McDonald's is an absolute lifesaver. If you're somewhere and you don't have any money and you just need a free toilet, find a McDonald's. In most situations, it will be free. You might have to make a purchase so that you can use the toilet, but it's more than worth it if you really need to go and you're stuck somewhere. If you are on a cruise and you need to get cash out, you can do it from a cash machine on board, but I would definitely recommend that you don't do that. They'll normally have a charge of around 3%, I think, and they'll have a fee, a standard fee on top of that. So it might be $5 fee and then 3% of what you're getting out, which is an insanely bad way to get cash out. Definitely bring the cash or get it out in the ports if you can. I actually surveyed some people from our Facebook group to ask them how much cash they would spend on a seven night cruise. And I've got some quotes for you here. So David says he normally sells Norwegian Cruise Line and has a beverage package. So he only really brings enough extra for tips or in case of emergency, he would bring around 200 pounds, which is a fair amount. We've got Joy next who says she takes too much, usually around 500 pounds. If it's Euro, she just saves them for her next holiday. I would recommend doing that. It's quite easy for me when I cruise, a lot of the places that I go to take Euros, I don't tend to get currency out in every single little place. A lot of the places you go to will still take euros even if their national currency isn't euros because they appreciate that a lot of people have euros. Of course, that isn't the case everywhere, but if you have some euros, that's always a good thing just to keep in your purse. Gavin says he spends zero pounds in cash, which is completely possible. You don't have to spend any cash when you cruise. That's not a problem at all. Paul says he usually spends $500 in the casino, $200 on expenses, and $300 for additional tips. I was really surprised when I did this survey how much money people spend in the casino. I do go in the casino sometimes when I cruise, but I'll probably spend 10 pounds maybe on a cruise, and that's me treating myself to spend 10 pounds. I'm not a big gambler, but it sounds like a lot of people do gamble. A lot of the machines in casinos will take physical notes, usually dollars, sometimes euros. You can just use your onboard accounts. So you don't necessarily have to have money if you do wanna go in the casino. Some cruisers will choose to put their onboard expenses on cash. You can either load cash onto your onboard account, or on some cruises, you can pay with cash at the end of the cruise. I would never do that or recommend doing that because it seems like so much work. For me, I automatically register a credit card when I join the cruise and at the end of the cruise, it comes off of my bill and I don't think any more of it. But some people really do still like using cash. I suppose it's a very good budgeting tool to say this is how much money I have and this is how much I will spend. It is possible, but cruise lines definitely prefer you to pay on a card. It's much easier for them than counting out all of this money and it makes long queues at reception. If you're on a cruise in the Caribbean, they usually will accept dollars. If you're on a cruise in a lot of Europe, they will accept euros, even if their currency isn't euros. Do bear in mind though, that if you're gonna pay in euros in a country where the currency isn't euros, you'll usually get your change back in the local currency, which might not be all that useful to you. As I said, most people seem to pay their onboard expenses with credit or debit cards, but it is possible to do that with cash. If you're gonna do that with cash, there are a few more things that you need to budget for. The first thing to budget for is excursions. I usually do my own thing and don't book excursions with a cruise line just because they can tend to be quite expensive and you can usually do those things on your own without too much trouble. That said, sometimes I do do cruise line excursions and they're very, very easy. They can be very, very interesting. And if there's something you specifically want to see or do, the easiest way to do that is usually to book a cruise line excursion. These can cost 30, 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds per day per person. They can get really, really expensive. You can usually see the cruise lines excursions on the website before the cruise. So you can work out what you wanna do and budget for that. If you are paying in cash, you also need to budget for specialty dining. You don't have to eat in any specialty restaurants during a cruise. Your cruise fare does include food that is enough to feed you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And on most cruises, I don't eat in specialty restaurants. But if you particularly would like a nice steak or an Asian meal, they'll usually have specialty restaurants which have a charge for them on cruise ships. Specialty dining is either charged by the entire meal or by the item. These will be added to your onboard account, but if you're paying by cash, it's just another thing you need to budget for. They can be 50, 100 pounds per meal. They can get quite expensive. The idea is that the meals here are far superior quality to that of the main dining room. I would argue that they're not always better just because they're more expensive. It's completely possible to go on a cruise and just eat in the main dining room and the buffet and be fed and be happy and have great food. But if you do wanna eat something special, maybe you've got a special birthday or an anniversary, budgeting for specialty restaurants is always a good idea. 
The next thing you're gonna to have to budget for is gratuities. These are automatic tips that are added on by a lot of cruise lines onto your onboard account. These are usually around £10 per person per night. So if you go on a seven night cruise, you will have £70 added to your account at the end for tips. More and more cruise lines seem to be including these now in the cruise fare, especially if they're trying to attract a British market. For us in Britain, we don't normally tip that much extra. We would prefer just to have the price and that pays the wages. But for some reason on American cruise lines, you tend to pay the cruise fare and then these tips are the wages of the staff. You can take them off and tip people if you would like to, but that is a completely different video. If you are gonna pay your onboard account in cash, you're just gonna to have to budget around 10 pounds per person per day and expect that to come off your account at the end. If you don't know, that can be a horrible, horrible surprise, especially if you're going on a long cruise. You also might want to budget for a spa or beauty treatment. They do all kinds of massages, facials, teeth whitening, Botox even, you can get anything done on a spa. What I tend to do is book a thermal suite, which is like a pass to the day area of the spa. That's my favorite thing to do. And if you do wanna do any spa treatments, you can usually look on the website before you cruise and work out how much they're gonna cost. As I said earlier in the video, I don't normally gamble that much, but if you're someone that does, just set that in your budget, set yourself a limit, you know how much you're gonna spend, and then that's done. The next thing that you might want to budget for is internet. Internet can be quite expensive on cruises and it can be kind of slow. It's getting much better, but I probably still would not pay for it if it wasn't for the fact that I'm doing YouTube and I'm updating my Instagram and my Twitter and my Facebook every single day of a cruise. Cruise lines will normally have different packages, so they might have a cheap package, which is £10 a day, which is just for social accounts. Then they'll have maybe a £20 a day and even £30 a day if you want to stream video. Sometimes you can buy packages by the megabyte, which I really, really hate, because if you're trying to load something, you can just see your megabytes dropping away and you don't realize how much internet you use until you're watching it go. It's very depressing. Sometimes you can book by the day or the whole cruise, and sometimes you can just get completely unlimited packages. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please do. My Instagram is just called Emma Cruises. And when I cruise, I share daily updates every few hours, pretty much, of what I'm doing, what I'm eating, where I'm going. And if you wanna try a new cruise line or go to a new destination, it can be a really good way to get an insight into what it's actually like. It's all very well looking at the adverts and the glossy magazines, but it can be quite different when you're actually there. So make sure you are following me on Instagram if you are on Instagram. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to I bring you a new video every single weekend, Sundays at 7pm UK time. Be there or be square and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>